Hello and welcome to the Athlete Archives. Today I continue with Season 3's October theme of the Grim, the Morbid, and the Macabre. Today's athlete played three years in Major League Baseball before going off the rails on a flight from Detroit one night in 1935. In a drunken rage, he became violent and tried to commandeer the airplane, taking him to Buffalo. Trying to fend off the attack, the flight pilot beat Len in the head with a fire extinguisher, eventually killing him. This is the bizarre story of Len Kennecke. Before I get too far into it, I do want to say I am not 100% sure how to pronounce Len's last name. I usually defer to baseball reference, but they were of no help. So it could be Kennecke, could be Kennec, Konecki, but I'm going with Kennecke, and if I'm wrong, I apologize. Leonard George Kennecke was born January 18, 1904 in Baraboo, Wisconsin. After graduating from high school in 1924, he began working as a railroad fireman. Uh, in case you're not familiar with this term, his job was basically shoveling coal to maintain the boiler's fire on a train. It's hard physical labor, obviously, and the job helped Len develop an athletic, muscular body. It was while working for the railroad that Len got into baseball. One of his co-workers was a former minor leaguer, Murray Boyle. Boyle happened to manage the town baseball club in Escanaba, Michigan, a stop on the rail line. Boyle needed players one day and convinced Len to come out and fill in as a substitute. He apparently showed some raw natural ability as a hitter, and Len was hooked. Len ended up taking a leave of absence from the railroad to play summer ball. He eventually joined semi-pro teams in Michigan and Wisconsin. Looking at his minor league stats on baseball reference, in 1927, he started with the Moline Plowboys of the Mississippi Valley League. He hit 343 with 20 home runs there. After hitting an even higher 389 for the Plowboys in 1928, he moved up to the Indianapolis Indians, where he hit 394 in 17 games before the season ended. Over the next few years, he played for the Indianapolis Indians, the Quincy Indians, the Springfield Senators, and the Jersey City Skeeters before making it to the majors in 1932 with John McGraw's New York Giants. He continued to work on the railroad during off-seasons until the railway gave him an ultimatum in 1930 to choose either between his job on the railway or baseball. Len chose baseball. He also got married that year, had a daughter two years later, and seems to have had a good family life. His 1931 season with the Indianapolis Indians was a banner year. Len hit 353 on his way to being selected an American Association All-Star. He led the league with 19 triples and 24 home runs, demonstrating enough power and high average to attract the attention of New York Giants and John McGraw. McGraw went to watch Len play in person in August of 1931 and was so impressed he offered the Indians club owner $75,000 for Len's contract, which is about one and a half million dollars today. The following year, Len made his major league debut in the Polo Grounds on April 12, 1932. He went 0 for 4 with a hit by pitch against right hander Phil Collins with that invisible touch. He scuffled a bit, and when John McGraw unexpectedly resigned in June, Len's playing time got slashed. In 42 games, he hit 256 with an OPS of only 700. On June 9, Len went 0 for 4 in a 7 to 0 loss to St. Louis. Player manager Bill Terry immediately optioned him to the Jersey City Skeeters of the AA International League. That offseason, New York gave up on Len and sold him to the Buffalo Bison. He would do well enough in 1933, hitting 334 to grab the attention of the Brooklyn Dodgers. The Dodgers signed Len for 1934, and he had the season of his life. He hit 320, slugged a whopping 919, and drew almost 
twice as many walks as he had strikeouts. Unfortunately for Len, the 34 season came to an end, and somewhere in that offseason, things changed. He struggled to find his groove in 1935. By mid-September, Len's batting average was well below his 1934 mark. He hit 283 with a 741 OPS. Home runs dropped from 14 to 4. His fielding had also regressed with eight errors committed in only 86 games. The Dodgers were now completely out of any pennant race, and Casey Stengel decided it was time to see some prospects play and evaluate them for 1936. On a road trip to St. Louis, Stengel told Len and pitchers Les Munns and Bob Barr that their seasons were over. They were given the rest of their pay and then booked aboard an American Airlines flight back to New York. Len was never known as a drinker, but he boarded that flight in St. Louis with a bottle of whiskey in his hand. The flight was scheduled for two layovers, one in Chicago and a second in Detroit. The flight to Chicago was uneventful, not so with the trip to Detroit. Mid-route, Len became obnoxious, arguing with fellow passengers and knocking down a stewardess when she tried to intervene. He then challenged another passenger to a fight and spent the remainder of the flight under restraint, guarded by the plane's large co-pilot. Upon landing in Detroit, Len was kicked off the plane by airline officials. Munz and Barr reported last seeing Len sleeping it off in the airport lounge. The two pitchers then reboarded the plane to New York without him. Sometime after midnight, Len woke up and was able to find a charter pilot, William Mulqueeny, who was willing to take him to Buffalo. The charter was aboard a small six-passenger plane. The other passenger was the pilot's friend, Erwin Davis, who was a famous daredevil parachutist known as the Bat. For some unknown reason, shortly after takeoff, Len began nudging the pilot in the shoulder, almost like he was trying to pick a fight. Ordered to the back seat of the plane, Len then started a fight with the much smaller Davis. Then, for no apparent reason, Len attempted to seize control of the plane from the pilot. Mulqueeny himself was an athlete, a former University of Detroit football lineman. The two men struggled as a plane veered, fighting for control. In pure desperation, Mulqueeny bashed Kennecke in the head several times with a fire extinguisher, finally knocking him out. With the struggle over, Mulqueeny made an emergency landing on the grounds of Long Branch Racetrack, located near Toronto. First responders pronounced Len dead. Mulqueeny and Davis were taken into police custody on charges of involuntary manslaughter. The eventual trial was short, both men having obviously acted in self-defense. Len's insane behavior that night was completely out of character. Family and former teammates were stunned. No history of violent drunkenness, no real confrontation of any sort was in Len's background. It's truly baffling. And unfortunately, it cost him his life. That's the bizarre story of Len Kennecke. Thank you. Take care.